in uh, the cent research center Gran Sasso in L'Aquila, and then with postdoc research also at UCL and also in uh, UAV in Venice. I think uh, his view also because he's a young researcher, so I have to yeah. stress it. <laughs> I am envy. Uh, I think his view will be very inspiring, not really for your work, which is supposed to be almost at the end, but for your reflection about this period of research about the media. Thanks, Emanuele. Thank you. Um, thank you all to be here. I'm very happy to be here today. Um, I will try to, let's say, organize my lesson uh, around uh, three issues I think can somehow characterize uh, the new Via Emilia and um, the economic, social, um, and financial, uh, and even identitarian transformations affecting the province of Piacenza and uh, the urban area in question during this week. So I decided to um, call my lesson the Mediterranean City of Piacenza, which is obviously a provocation because the first uh, objection could be Piacenza is a, a seaside city or a coastal city, so why you speak about the Mediterranean city of Piacenza. I will try to uh, use the three issues I choose to describe um, Piacenza and the new Via Emilia to answer this question or reply to this objection. So, sorry. Um, the three issues, uh, the three, let's say, topics I choose are logistics, manufacturing, and agriculture. So basically, my lesson uh, prioritizes or will prioritize the economic aspect related to the new Via Emilia. But at the same time, I will try to use them to make environmental and social issues uh, arise during my speech. OK, let's start with logistics. I mean, it's obvious that um, today, logistics is strongly affecting the new Via Emilia landscape here in Piacenza. Probably it's not something new for you after this week. But what I want to stress to begin with is that this is not a new thing for Piacenza. Um, and this is where the Mediterranean Sea uh, come into the picture. Um, let's say that Piacenza is here, okay, more or less. When, what you can see, sorry, because sometimes the pictures are not very clear. So, uh, I'm a sociologist, and uh, being a sociologist, I'm not skilled in providing nice diagrams and graphs. I'm so sorry for that. But, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, what I want to stress in order to explain why historically um, Piacenza and Via Emilia is at the center stage of uh, traffics, commercial traffics in Europe, and then logistics is not a new thing for Via Emilia and Piacenza. I want to show you this aspect. Let's say that Piacenza is here, okay? You have this indication, okay, these icons, explaining the fact that uh, 
here, here, and here. You have basically uh, Alpine passes, you know, like way where um, during the Roman Empire and from the Roman Empire um, to the present, basically. Um, let's say these are the passes where it's possible to cross the Alps. And that's very important because they became extremely important since the time of the Roman Empire as uh, passes used for commercial purposes. Okay, so basically uh, what you can see here, the network you see here, is the network of uh, paths and old streets uh, connecting uh, the different regions of the Roman Empire. Okay, uh, Piacenza, as you can see, is on the map. And you have Via Emilia, okay, here, more or less. But as you can see, Rome is here, just to be clear, okay. This is a very important, Piacenza is on, let's say, a very important path toward the center and the northern Europe, okay? But you have also here the Alps, the mountains, for the non-Europeans among us. Uh, and you have these three very important passes through the Alps. For example, um, uh, the pass of uh, San Bernardo is very important because it's the only one that uh, traffics, commercial traffics, could uh, pass through uh, 12 months a year, almost always, because the most of the passes obviously experience the problem that during the winter, because of the snow, you cannot pass through the Alps. So, uh, okay, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, no, sorry. Um, San Bernardo Pass is here, I think. Can you see, I, I know the, the picture is terrible, but can you see my point here? So there is a strong connection through what is today known as France, but even Germany, okay, which is the most economic, powerful country, industrial country in Europe, and one of the most important worldwide, okay. Sorry. And, and you have also connections to the Northern Europe, okay? So remember this issue. So just to give you an idea of why Piacenza grew up and why Piacenza grew up in the past and how much logistics was important for the economic life of Piacenza since, let's say, the Roman Empire. So, the modernity and, the, and in, in the contemporary Europe. Okay, uh, on the other side, there is another, sorry, not on the other side. Um, uh, yeah, on the other side, let's say, there is another important thing to remember when we speak about logistics, which is the fact that Piacenza is an important city in Italy, which is, uh, in turn, a sort of corridor within the Mediterranean Sea. So, you probably don't know the fact that, uh, let's say, contemporary capitalism, uh, according to Giovanni Arrighi, 
was born in Italy. The banking system was born in Italy hmm? uh, after the Middle Age. Uh, and this is in particular because we have two very important republic which prosperated because of trade exchanges throughout the entire Mediterranean. The Republic of Venice, for example, covered more or less all this area, okay, including for a very short amount of time, Piacenza, a matter of months, actually. But anyway, uh, the point is, when we speak about trade exchanges, uh, commercial traffics involving the Emilia, we have to think about this thing. The Mediterranean was a connection between Africa, Asia, and Europe, and Italy is a corridor within the Mediterranean Sea. But at the same time, through the Alps, Italy is also, you know, Northern Italy is also a critical connection to the Central Europe and between Mediterranean Sea and Central Europe. Remember that. Okay, so uh, the present, I'm sorry, this is even more terrible than the former one, I know that. Probably, I don't know if you see this uh, red line. Uh, I wanted to identify Via Emilia, and in particular, the densifying uh, logistic infrastructures, which are strongly affecting the landscape of the new Via Emilia. You know, here, okay, this is Piacenza, okay? And here you can see the proliferation of logistical infrastructures for storage, okay? C can you see the proportion? It's more or less, you know, even here, it's more or less as large as Piacenza itself, okay? So this sees the present of the Emilia. And it's again uh, related to logistics as it was in the past. So it's not something new, but at the same time, it is changing profoundly the landscape of Piacenza today. So, uh, this is a little exercise. Basically, my main uh, field of work is, uh, let's say, the nexus between finance and urban development, and in particular, the nexus between finance and housing. Anyway, this allows me to be a bit, let's say, skilled in understanding um, shareholding structure uh, of, uh, let's say, global companies. So what was to take into consideration some actors uh, that invested in the logistical uh, infrastructure uh, development in Piacenza. So, uh, Piacenza Intermodale, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, is the authority governing part, at least a major part, of this development. And I think it's here, the, the main area we are speaking about. Uh, so what I did was to look at look into the actors investing in that part of the city, or that somehow uh, have now, a, let's say, 
um, have now infrastructures, um, nodes uh, of their global network in Piacenza along the Via Emilia. And what I saw was that, for example, Piacenza Intermodale, which is the authority, or better, the company governing the process of infrastructuration, is actually controlled by this Austrian uh, transnational corporation, um, SDA has as a um, logistics area um, where I showed you uh, before. And when we speak about SDA, we speak about the Gruppo Poste Italiane, which controls SDA. DHL is another uh, important actor having a capannone warehouse there and it is controlled by Deutsche Post. The same uh, is for Geodis, which is controlled by SNCF, which is the state railways company in France. So what uh, does uh, this suggest to you? Someone knows something, this company, what these three companies, which are, transna which are transnational companies, but this is more for Europeans. I'm sorry, because I know maybe someone uh, can help me. Uh, Deutsche Post, SNCF, Gruppo Post Italiane. What these companies have in common? Someone? Even if you are wrong, it's not a problem, but try, please. What they do, do they have in common? SNCF, Frame, Deutsche Post, Italian Post. Yeah, exactly. They are uh, state-controlled companies or state-invested companies. Uh, so. This is interesting from my point of view, because somehow it suggests that there is not just a commercial trade interest, okay, here, but also a geopolitical interest uh, related to trade exchange in Europe and logistics in Europe. These are pillars of the logistics in Europe, and at the same time are strategic companies operating in the logistic sector in Europe. So again, remember what I said about the position of Piacenza. Why you think there is this interest by, let's say, European countries, powerful European countries, Italy, uh, Germany, France, okay? And at the same time, why there is this interest by very important, huge transnational companies coming from Central Europe? Why you think it's so important? What this suggests to you? Try, even if you are wrong. It's not a problem. But it's a good exercise to try to think about it. What I, what I said about the position of Piacenza historically. Yeah, or not necessarily, but this means that somehow there is an interest. Piacenza has a positional somehow uh, advantage. And that Positional advance, ad, advantage there since the Roman Empire to the present. And Via Emilia is still very important from that point of view. Just 
Piacenza, you know that the so-called Piacenza intermodale, or I, I don't know how to translate it, uh, but let's say the logistic platform uh, uh, where all these warehouse and logistics infrastructures are um, developing, which is, as I said, here, okay, along the Emilia. Uh, sorry. So there is, uh, um, let's say, a project which is actually a work in progress to connect back there the uh, harbor system of Liguria region, which include the harbors of Genoa, Savona, and Vado Ligure, and the, let's say, the inter, intermodal platform. I don't know, it's, uh, I think it's, a, it's intermodal. The intermodal logistics platform in Piacenza. Okay, why this is so important? I want to show you, uh, yeah, okay. Um, Vado, Genova, La Spezia, here. This is the arbor system of Liguria region, okay? So this is important because this is a gate tower, Central Europe. Along the ways I showed you before when I spoke about the Alpine passes, which are historically connected to Via Emilia. Hmm? Okay, so for example, uh, as you can see from this uh, picture, I, I didn't do that because I'm not able to, basically. Uh, I, 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 stole, I stole it. But anyway, um, you know, this, is, this picture is very clear. This diagram is very clear. So you have the arbor system of Liguria region, okay, and they have a very direct connection to the Med EU corridor and the RALP EU corridor. I want to read how to you how the European Commission describes um, these two corridors. Uh, I saved the um, European Commission official uh, site, uh, website page in order to do that rapidly. But okay, I will read just one of, of the two. Of the, um, I will read just the overview of the um, Ren Alpine corridor, which is the RALP EU corridor. Okay. And I think this could sound you familiar after uh, having listened what I said before. The Rhine Alpine Corridor constitutes one of the busiest freight routes in Europe. It connects key north sea ports of Belgium and the Netherlands with the Mediterranean port of Genoa. The regions it encompasses count among the most densely populated and economically strong in Europe. Altogether, more than 7 million people live, work, and consume in the catchment area of the Ren Alpine Corridor, which is also home to a number of leading manufacturing and trading companies, production plants, and distribution centers. The corridor runs through the so-called Blue Banana, which includes major EU economic centers such as Brussels and Antwerp in Belgium, the Ramstad region in the Netherlands, the German Rhein Ruhr and Rhein Neckar regions, the Basel and Zurich regions in Switzerland, and the Milano and Genoa regions in northern Italy. This multimodal corridor incorporates the Rhine River as the key inland waterway in Europe, 
as well as important tunneling projects in Switzerland, including the world's largest and deepest rail tunnel, the Gotthard Bay Tunnel. Okay, I don't know if this helps, but it's clear that these, it's clear the somehow, um, let's say, coincidence between what I said about the potential role of the Emilia, uh, the position of Piacenza within Europe, and the importance of, let's say, the connection between the Northern Italy and the Central Europe, Germany, Belgium, Netherlands, okay, the richest and economically leading regions in Europe. So you can understand from this point of view the importance of the connection, which is actually a, um, a rail freight connection between uh, the harbor system of Liguria and Piacenza, which is a direct uh, rail freight connection, okay? Um, okay. There is another reason why uh, this connection is important and all of Genoa and, let's say, Liguria region harbor system uh, uh, are important for the trade, exchange, and commerce uh, between the Mediterranean area and the Central Europe. And this is in the light of the so-called Belt and Road Initiative promoted by China and the Chinese state to increase the export towards Europe, okay? As you probably know, China is one of the uh, industrial engine of the world, the manufacturing engine of the world in the present. And the connection uh, between Europe and China, the logistics connection, pass through the Suez Canal, hmm? firstly, and can you see the main route here? Okay. And the connection to the arbor system of the Guria region. Here you have Piacenza, you have a connection, and you have the importance of Piacenza and as one of the nodes, the logistical node between the northern Italy, the Mediterranean Sea, the Belt and Road, and another important industrial engine uh, of, uh, of the world, which is Germany, for example, but in general, Northern and Central Europe. Um, this is uh, an interesting map showing the uh, rail freight corridors and in general the rail freight uh, network uh, in Europe, okay? So I'm speaking about the trains transporting um, commodities, okay? Transporting things. Rail freight connect. Okay. And Piacenza is more or less, uh, uh, I cannot even myself, I can. <laughs> um, uh, I lost myself within the map. Sorry. Uh, I, I try to see from here because, okay. Um, ta -ta -ta -ta. Oh, yeah, thank you. Okay, sorry, I lost myself. But anyway, um, Milano is here, I think, right? No. Oh, okay, sorry, because I lost myself. But consider that 
where you see Milano, okay, you see also here Verona, because I mean, this, is, this map shows uh, obviously the uh, rail freight network in Europe uh, as it was, a, 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 let's say, a, a tube network uh, map, okay? So it's nice the way they organize the, the, the story, okay? But obviously, uh, distances and uh, spatial distribution of cities uh, is not uh, realistic, okay? Um, so, but anyway, what I wanted to see is that uh, it's, from my point of view, it's really, uh, it's extremely uh, clear the fact that this is a very important uh, uh, axis towards Northern Europe, Germany, and even from here, obviously, okay, this is Italy because this is Milan and this is Verona. Okay, Liguria, France. Okay, so what I want to show you is that even from the point of view of the rail freight network in Europe, the role of Piacenza as a logistic node is extremely clear from my point of view. Uh, if you want to uh, somehow uh, dig into this issue, I suggest you to read uh, this book, Operations of Capital, by Mezzadra and Nelson, uh, which is basically about logistics, even if not exclusively about it. So the second uh, thing, uh, I think easier, I hope, um, is... Uh, agriculture, which is another strong economic aspect characterizing the history and the present of Piacenza and uh, the new Via Emilia as well. Um, the reason to be very, uh, to summarize, let's say, uh, is that Piacenza is in the middle of the Po Valley. Actually, Piacenza is very close to, and the Emilia as well. Uh, they are very close to the Po River itself, as you probably know. The Po River is uh, a connection to the Mediterranean Sea, even if it's not really exploited for trade purposes. And actually, it could be also used, it could be used as a, you check our city or vice versa to reach Piacenza from uh, the Adriatic, Adriatic Sea. But anyway, that's not so important. The important thing is that this position, geographical position, made Piacenza Mm, or let's say put Piacenza in the middle of one of the most fertile and fruitful regions worldwide in terms of, let's say, agri-farming potentials uh, and uh, uh, productivity. Um, the presence of uh, Via Emilia reflects this um, historical uh, legacy, okay, but in a very different way. As you can see, looking at the landscape, the farming, the agricultural landscape in Piacenza alongside Via Emilia, you can clearly see a monocultural uh, um, farming. So, uh, single um, vegetable farming. I don't know if the right word, but anyway, I think it's clear what I want to say. This is an example of 
intensive agriculture, which is an industrial uh, way to, let's say, exploit land for cultural purposes. And today we know that this is also a way to impoverish the land, to um, it's a very impacting way to practice agriculture. And it's also a problem in terms of pollution, water pollution, and at the same time, a problem in terms of biodiversity preservation. So, in other words, I'm saying that intensive agriculture is today a challenge as far as it's also a huge issue um, related to climate change, okay? And to, let's say, protect ourselves from climate change to protect biodiversity from climate change and to survive it. So, what we can do here? What we have? Um, I want to use a concept here because I also see an opportunity. Um, of course, we, we have to change the way we think about agriculture. Uh, I'm not an expert about it, I'm studying but I'm not an expert at the moment about it, but I think, uh, yeah, organic agriculture or other kind of natural agriculture, there are alternatives. I'm not here to speak about it because I'm not the, 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 the best person to do it. But what I want to, to say, it's something I'm studying, and using uh, the concept of uh, perturbation by Anna Tsing, uh, who is an American anthropologist, a senior anthropologist, actually, which spoke about, which tried to, who tried to rethink the idea of perturbation, okay? And, and she's basically, okay, it's, it's very complicated, but she tried to say, basically, we think about perturbation, human perturbation of nature, as something negative, and most of the time it is probably, but at the same time, at the same time, she say this is not helping us to understand the role of human being within nature, or basically as a part of nature and a part of life. I don't think that nature is made of uh, lives. I think nature is life, and we are part of life, not a sum of lives, okay? But anyway, uh, I, I love Anna Tsing. I think it's very interesting what she says. But the point is another one. She said, what we call human perturbation is not necessarily a violation of nature. Doesn't mean necessarily violating nature, because she said life uh, is a cooperative creation and is based about uh, um, solidarity and generous interactions among, uh, um, let's say, species. Yeah, exactly. Vegetables uh, or plants or even animals, and in including human beings. So, <laughs> This is very interesting from my point of view because I'm, I'm working in, in my hometown on, on an issue which is, in my opinion, very important. Uh, it was very impressive to me. This uh, does not come from me, but I, 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 I had the chance to uh, visit uh, a, a, a farming uh, uh, area of my hometown with Professor uh, Ferlinghetti from uh, University degli Studi, um, Università degli Studi di Bergamo, uh, who describe irrigation channels in a way 
which completely changed my way to, to see the challenge of, let's say, intensive agriculture and to find, find or imagine a possible exit strategy. So what, what she said is that, I mean, if we look at uh, the, let's say, territory of our province, I say our because I come from Bergamo, which is a, 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 a province characterized uh, by uh, intensive uh, farming landscape, um, as much as Piacenza. So if you look at, in particular, Piacenza, you can see that it's, we can say that this, okay, uh, let, um, Via Emilia is more or less here, okay? The area we are interesting, interested in is more or less here, just to be clear, okay? Even a smaller, actually. But anyway, uh, the point is that this um, picture show you uh, the, the presence of water on the territory, okay? So you can see the Po River. Uh, you have the Trebbia River, okay? You have uh, the, um, I don't remember the name, the um, Nore uh, River, but at the same time, you have a uh, very developed and spread diffusion of smaller channels. Uh, just to give you an idea, okay, it's terrible, but it shows the density, the density of the irrigation channels developed since the Middle Age, okay, in order to provide water to farming, okay? Look at it. Why it's so interesting and why I spoke about perturbation as a resource in this case. Something that Perling Professor Perlinghetti told me was uh, illuminating, enlightening for me. He said that, okay, these pictures uh, come from um, agricultural land, my hometown. What I realized, we have a very similar, uh, let's say, network, very dense, similar dense network of irrigation, uh, artificial irrigation channels, okay? So that's the reason why I spoke about human perturbation. Uh, so what Professor Fellinghetti said uh, or uh, discovered through uh, his um, research activity was that these artificial irrigation channels create the condition of humidity which somehow replicate, replicate um, the humid climate of the natural wild forest. What does it mean? Is that alongside is uh, very small artificial irrigation channels, you can have like very rare species of vegetables that you usually can find in the wild forest we are losing at this point. So can you see the potential of this incredible network of um, irrigation channels, which in Piacenza represent somehow the human perturbation effect, okay? But at the same time, a research on culture. It's incredible to think about the fact that now we are experiencing these very uh, impacting and polluting intensive agriculture landscape, but at the same time, the agriculture sector is still using the same artificial channel, okay? And uh, there is also an authority in Italy named uh, 
consortio di bonifica, and when we pay 100 and something euros a year, okay, we are basic as a tax. We are basically paying for the maintenance of this incredible um, infrastructure. Why? Why? I, I, we are not farmers. Yes, but the water is able to, first of all, uh, um, let's say the water is to, uh, you, you know, um, the water has been used to eliminate uh, like dark waters in the past, and um, water is able also to um, um, let's say um, I don't know how to say it, but purifying the land, okay, and it's extremely important for agriculture, but even for the uh, safety of our territory, okay? So it's not just a morphological issue, it's not just an, uh, a, a farming issue, but it's also an issue concerning the assets, the use, and the recycle of waters for human purposes, because water is life, you know? And uh, I suggest to read this book about it, if you want to uh, improve your knowledge in these kind of issues. Uh, I'm not seeing the mushroom at the end of the world. It's an amazing book, an amazing book. Um, okay, and I think, yeah. Um, I'm more or less taking one hour. Uh, I started at um, 2.22. And so I'm going to finish around 3.22. I will try. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is the, the third uh, issue, the third topic I want to uh, approach, to address uh, today, which is industrialization in Piacenza, manufacturing. There is a story of manufacturing in Piacenza, uh, which is somehow related water, as you probably know, or as you probably can imagine. Uh, this is the story of, for example, the textile sector in Bergamo, my hometown, where um, rivers became an incredible source of energy. So the entire um, textile sector in my hometown in the 19th century uh, operated thanks to um, rivers, water, and then using uh, cleaning energy and zero cost energy. But anyway, Piacenza uh, could have a similar story, I don't know, but uh, I think what is important is again the position of Piacenza. It was the same also for Bergamo for some reason. Because, yeah, I said Piacenza was part of the Venice Republic for some months. But actually, it was more important for Piacenza the domination of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which is, you know, a Central Europe, um, which was a Central European power, which, which was, uh, let's say, um, the experience of the Republic of Venice was somehow the first experience of uh, global logistics in the story of the world. Uh, please read the book from Arrighi, which is the next one. I will test you. Um, and at the same time, I think the Austro-Hungarian Empire was uh, the first, was Europe before Europe. Of course, without a democracy, so it's completely another story. Even if I'm not sure that Europe are experiencing democracy properly. But anyway, the point is that the Austro-Hungarian Empire was... Europe before Europe, European Union before European Union. So somehow a cosmopolitan multicultural uh, empire. Uh, and in this sense, the belonging, the belonging of Piacenza to the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the connection I showed you 
through the Alpine path passes um, were uh, crucial in order to transfer uh, technological knowledge from Germany to the northern uh, Italy. Um, knowledge and skills about manufacturing and technological innovation. And these come from uh, Arrighi, Giovanni Arrighi, as I told you before. Um, anyway, my point is that uh, manufacturing is uh, the urban economy of Piacenza and uh, um, partly of the Piacenza's Via Emilia today. So we are not in a phase of de-industrialization. Actually, uh, manufacturing uh, in Piacenza is uh, uh, the leading uh, and driving economic force for um, the prosperity, the economic prosperity of uh, the entire province. And as you can see, uh, in the last 20th century, um, the annual export uh, in uh, Euro uh, kept, uh, has kept uh, uh, growing and growing, okay? So it's a very powerful sector in, in industry and manufacturing. In Piacenza is a very powerful sector uh, uh, producing wealth, because you know, when you export, this is a very uh, basic and a bit naive uh, way to explain economy, but and, uh, 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 obviously capitalist economy, but when you export things, commodities, okay, you are importing wealth, basically, money, okay, it's very simple. And um, let's say that um, yeah. uh, the yellow line is uh, um, the um, what uh, changes from one year to another year. So, um, for example, here we have uh, we had a drop because of the financial crisis. And then, uh, uh, I don't know, that year, uh, the export, uh, um, let's say, grew up, increased uh, of, um, I don't know, like, uh, it doesn't increase, decrease by, I don't know, of, uh, no, yeah, around zero, something like that. It depends, but, I know, it's here, sorry. You know, it's like uh, meno uh, uh, 10. Meno in English is, sorry. Ah, okay. So I, I think it's clear. It's like, I don't know, like in uh, 2011, this is a classic, uh, uh, let's say, dumping effect, dump, uh, after a, a drop, an important drop. Like this year, for example. This year, uh, is growing up uh, around six point something because uh, uh, it, the, the Italian economy uh, knew a, a, a dramatic drop uh, during the pandemic, basically, you know. So this is the, but what is interesting for me is uh, the, um, let's say, steady growth for the export, which is basically related to mechanics. In so, um, this is about the added value. Uh, what I, I saw, even if it's not uh, showed by these diagrams, is that, uh, and that's the problem, uh, the industrial sector in Piacenza is losing uh, uh, competitivity. Uh, so, the productivity of work, I think. Yeah, it's the way to define it. So, I'm not an economist, but what I'm saying is that um, they, um, uh, the Accenza uh, industrial sector is uh, losing, even if 
not dramatically uh, competitive in, in uh, let's say productivity and competitivity year by year, but at the same time, uh, it's, uh, it, the industrial sector is still very important. And this is, this reminds us that uh, sector needs, always needs uh, innovation and continues, uh, continuing innovation. Uh, I'm not an expert, so sorry if this could uh, sound a bit naive, uh, but what I want to show you, which is more important for me and my uh, speech today, is that, um, okay, uh, activity extra um, uh, extraction, like uh, raw material extraction, uh, manufacturing, uh, um, energy supply, uh, gas supply, and let's say uh, the industrial sector, very general term, okay, um, is uh, represent uh, more or less um, twenty five percent of uh, the um, employees in the province of Piacenza. So one person out of four is working in the industrial sector. They are industrial workers. So very important from my point of view. Yeah, in 2009, it was 27. But if you look at the construction sector, you can clearly see that uh, the loss of jobs uh, uh, concerned the, the construction sector. And actually, the manufacturing um, also is doing better in 2000, was doing better in 2008 than in uh, 2000, um, 2000, 2009. Um, yeah, the, the, obviously, the data uh, concerns 2008 and, on, and not 2009 and 2020, because from my point of view, they are not so uh, reliable because of the pandemic, which is an exceptional uh, condition. Uh, but anyway, what I want to say is that uh, somehow in terms of, uh, um, let's say, creation of jobs uh, and provision of jobs, uh, the industrial sector is still very important in the province of Piacenza, even more than 10 years ago. Uh, yeah, the construction sector lost something because of the financial crisis that basically uh, eat uh, uh, dramatically the construction sector in Italy because uh, the over of the construction sector. But this is not important. What is important, in my opinion, is the importance of uh, the industrial sector, which is a counter-rhetoric. If you think about it, that uh, today we speak about, uh, the, let's say, the knowledge economy, post-industrial economy, but actually, in the northern of Italy, we are one of the, let's say, um, uh, industrial engine of the world, we can say, together with Germany, because we are a system, together with Germany. Northern Italy, hmm, the Po Valley, and the Ruhr are part of the same system. And the most of the things we do, especially in mechanics, uh, are components for the industrial sector in Germany. So Piacenza is European, even from this point of view. This is my idea. But anyway, um, and the other important component is obviously, um, which is uh, about 16.5% of uh, the employees in Piacenza, is the public administration, including education and the education system, the urban education system. Um, okay. Uh, oh, no, sorry. I did something wrong. No. Uh, okay. Um, why it is important? Um, I'm going to conclude. I'm sorry. Um, why? Sorry? Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I'm going to finish, actually. Sorry. Um, so why it's important uh, in, in social terms 
this uh, third economic issue I presented to you today, which is the industrial uh, sector in Piacenza and its importance. Because I think uh, the industrial, uh, the urban and, and, and provin provincial industrial system is probably the first uh, most attractive uh, driver for migration from Mediterranean countries. Um, basically, um, jobs in because of the structure of uh, the Italian labor uh, system, uh, industrial jobs are uh, the one of the uh, most protective pro protected segments of the labor market in Italy. So, when I speak about uh, industrial jobs, I'm not speaking about like you know. Uh, uh, the terrible conditions of uh, industrial workers in the factories of the uh, 19th century. I'm speaking about a very well protected uh, um, um, labor sector, which uh, give uh, opportunity of social mobility, even if is losing something time by time, even if in Italy is. Uh, very unevenly concentrated uh, in a very small part of the country, which is basically Emilia Romagna and Lombardy. But anyway, this is the reason why uh, I think the industrial sector uh, in Piacenza is one of the important, um, let's say, drivers in making the city cosmopolitan and multicultural. And I think this is very interesting because uh, it's another uh, extremely important challenge that is somehow changing our society. Uh, uh, and it's very important for uh, our uh, welfare system sustainability, for example, the pension system sustainability and the demographic um, um, reproduction of our country. Um, as I said, these migration, um, these these migrations uh, um, are for the most from European Mediterranean countries. Again, the importance of Piacenza in the Mediterranean area as a door uh, to, uh, as a gate to Europe. So if we include like uh, the Black Sea as one of the seas of the Mediterranean Sea, um, even Romania is a Mediterranean country. Okay, it's a bit forced, but anyway, Albania is a Mediterranean country, Morocco, India is not. Macedonia del Nord is a Mediterranean country, is part of the former Yugoslavia. Ukraine is on the Black Sea. Again, Egypto, the Suez Canal, a very important area of the Mediterranean economy. Uh, Ecuador is not, China is not, Bosnia Herzegovina, former Yugoslavia, Tunisia. Okay? So, the most of uh, let's say uh, migrants living in the province of Piacenza come from the Mediterranean. Um, why it's so important in demographic terms, but in general for the future of uh, the Via Emilia, of uh, the new Via Emilia, and in particular for the industrial sector, but not just for the industrial sector. And that's the point I want to. Uh, um, I, I want to to, uh, to address. Uh, look at these. Um, I don't know how to say it in in English. I'm sorry, but these shows the distribution of the migrant population in the province of Piacenza uh, for um, by uh, age cohort. Okay. So as you can see, you know that the, 
uh, migrant population of Piacenza is 15% uh, of the population. But if you look at, let's say, the uh, court between, I don't know, like 25 and 29, 30 and 34, 35 and 39, okay, you can clearly see they are, you know, in, in this case, 30, 34, okay, they are one person out of three. So they are the future of Piacenza. They are the future of the Mediterranean Piacenza and its industrial sector. And it's not just like that. Uh, Suggested so reading here is The Long 20th Century Money Power and the Origins of Our Times by Giovanni Arrighi. But anyway, and this is the conclusion, my conclusion, which is an open conclusion. The future of the Via Emilia, from my point of view, is cosmopolitan, an environmental uh, sustainable, it's social inclusive, and it's based on industrial innovation. Um, the resource, the lever, the driver for this Piacenza of the future and new Via Emilia is uh, its uh, knowledge economy, the urban knowledge economy, which is the role of its education system, which is not only uh, the lever for industrial innovation, but also for social mobility, for the new migrant population, which is growing and growing in Piacenza. And it's also a very important lever for our environmental transition. This is the axis uh, we are discussing during this week. And these are the universities nodes we have in Piacenza, Università del Sacro Cuore, Università degli Studi di Parma, Politecnico di Milano. And then, thanks to these polls, we have, to these uh, notes, sorry, uh, we have also connection to the university and research system of Milan and the research system of Emilia-Romagna region. Okay? So... This is just to give uh, importance uh, and recognize the importance and the mission of the academic system in this uh, uh, transformation and in the coming of the new uh, Via Emilia. Thank you. Thank you, Emanuel. I have like to see if are there questions? They are worrying because they have to finish to draw. <laughs> yes. Uh, just to understand, it's very, in, we're checking with, uh, with Sara uh, the data, no, because it's very interesting. It means that 20% of the population in, in the province of Piacenza comes from uh, foreign countries and a great part from Mediterranean countries. Uh, as far as you know, Study this type of uh, question and topics. Do you know where, in terms of uh, position, okay, along, uh, uh, is uh, stronger this presence of uh, uh, Mediterranean people, and what does it mean in terms of uh, also of uses of the spaces, uses of public space, public squares, of public space, or the street itself? Okay, uh, we imagine. I, I don't know. You're more precise than me. That now there is a certain habit using the street in a different way from Italian European culture. And uh, do you think that can be, I mean, pushes for the urban design? Uh, this is a very interesting uh, question. I look at it, this, uh, I look at it, um, data about the territorial distribution, the spatial distribution of uh, migrants uh, let's say foreigner citizens in um, uh, the province of Piacenza, but actually um, um, I, I don't want to say um, wrong things because I 
didn't prepare a, a slide about it. And yeah, it's important. Um, I, I remember that they used to obviously concentrate uh, in, um, in the main um, common, let's say, so uh, the main uh, city center, uh, which is Piacenza, for obvious reason. This is something, uh, let's say, um, uh, classical, even uh, if it is uh, counterintuitive. Counterintuitive, it's counterintuitive because uh, rents are higher in the main city centers like uh, Piacenza, and they are, let's say, um, rents are cheaper, um, let's say, in the province. Uh, but uh, typically, uh, there is uh, a direct access to the main city centers, like, for example, Milan, uh, and in this case, in this province, Piacenza because of uh, the access to opportunities and the fact that, uh, in i think and the fact that uh, in the main city center and access public transport which is a quite huge uh, issue in our provinces uh, because uh, um, our um, as you probably know our um, let's say uh, landscape uh, is not in, in the Po Valley is not made by uh, huge, uh, um, let's say, mega cities of big cities, but uh, um, let's say medium or small sized centers with uh, uh, a, uh, an impressive network of villages, very small villages, where the connection are, uh, let's say, quite difficult and uh, um, counter-economic. And that's the reason why for transport companies uh, is not, basically is not a, a reliable, it's not affordable, let's say, actually. And so that's uh, another issue. And the other one is that they tend to concentrate in, um, in the um, mainland, not on uh, like valleys or mountains. And uh, I think for the same reason. But I can, uh, uh, of course, I can provide uh, information uh, uh, and, and, and very detailed information because ISTAT uh, provides very good uh, uh, information about this data and even, uh, um, let's say, uh, age court uh, distribution, um, let's say, um, common by common. For non-Italians, uh, uh, the administrative uh, uh, common, uh, you, you know, we have a hierarchy, uh, an administrative hierarchy between region, provinces, and commons. So when I speak about cities or villages, I'm speaking about commons. Commun yeah. Or municipal. Yeah. Another question? Oh, thank you very much, uh, Manuele. It is the last, well, one of the last days of the workshop, so everybody is uh, feeling generating a, a dialogue, but this is very interesting. And, uh, and uh, well, for the next time, we need to anticipate your content at the beginning of the workshop. But you, you were on vacation, so I, we, can, we can do <laughs> Next year, go to vacation earlier than uh, end of August. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.